See brown in your face. Have you heard of everything at once? Do you know about everything at once? It's internationally known. Aliens listen to it. It's the best. <laughs> if there's everything. something you're looking for in the 814, or feeling a little bored and think there ain't no more, ain't no check more. out everything at once and allow it to be your source. It's that raw podcast that's always showing support, highlighting the scene. No need to take I-90 to peep or 79 to see how it be. Interviewing your locals with mindsets that are global. Innovators and creators on every single upload. So much going on in the EPA. Everything at once will keep you up today. Amazing guests. What you doing? Come through and hang with Tony and Dave. Community driven. Bringing everything at once from around the way. Everything at once from around the way. Hey. Please listen. We love you. <laughs> everything at once. Everything at once. Hello again, all you intergalactic listeners. We would like to start today's broadcast with a special thanks to all of our Patreon producers. Brian G, Josh W, E and D, Nick G, and Sadie M. Patreon is an awesome way to support this show and say thanks. You can become a Patreon supporter by clicking the link below and choosing to be an intern, assistant, or producer level supporter. And when we hit 10 Patreon supporters, Dave is going to perform an incredible feat that is yet to be determined. Hopefully it's something good. (laughs) We also want to thank all the local businesses and sponsors that supported this episode. These businesses get the everything at once stamp of approval. We couldn't do without them. And for those of you who have not heard, there are some interesting changes going on at Cauldron and Thorn. Yeah, what's going on there? Two years ago, America's first family of darkness landed in Erie, Pennsylvania. In a few short months, they built the world's largest shop, dedicated to the magical arts and metaphysical sciences. This summer, they invite you to explore the shadows of the human experience, a carefully curated catalog of arcane artifacts, and occult ephemera for the discerning collector. Cauldron and Thorn proudly presents The Dark Curiosities of the Vault. Well, Dave... They invited me back, and I checked it out, and I've got to say there is some incredible, extraordinary, paranormal stuff back there that's really just, uh, it's it really takes it to the next level. They're going above and beyond what they're used to out there. You always get all the all the sneak peeks. <laughs> Damn it. But you know what? I'm next su- time. Uh, next time, indeed. I'm super pumped, though. Is there anything else you can say about it? Well, not a whole lot right now. You're just going to have to go back there and check it out yourself uh, when the vault is finally open. And uh, I will be going there. We'll be going to uh, Cauldron and Thorn, which is located at 2724 West 8th Street. Um, I'll be going there in person to see what's in that vault since you already got that sneak peek, you bastard. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, I guess we should just get back to promoting uh, the sponsors. Yeah, let's get back to promoting the sponsors. Solid State. Solid State takes pride in all home remodeling projects. Solid State specializes in bathroom remodeling, kitchen renovations, windows and door installation, custom design work, and more, including painting, flooring, drywall, siding, decks. Get your free quote today by calling Nick at 814-397-7854. Solid Solid people, people, solid solid product, product, Solid State State Construction. Construction. Got a problem with your car? Tommy's Automotive can take care of everything car related. Tommy's Automotive is a reliable, trustworthy service provider. That's right. Tommy's Automotive can take care of brakes, exhaust, fluid changes, spark plugs, and all other maintenance needs. Tommy's Automotive also does fluid film undercoating to keep your car from getting eaten alive this winter by rust. Book your appointment today. Call Tommy at 814-384-8088. And now... What you've all been waiting for, our next guest, Daria and Hannah from ECAT, Erie Center for Arts and Technology. In the Health and Wealth Equity District. They're doing amazing things down there. You guys aren't going to want to miss this episode, hear about what they're doing and how they're doing it. It's incredibly good stuff for Erie. We always want to uh, build up the city in every uh, sector and way, and ECAT does a wonderful job of providing uh, sustainable ways for people to grow with this wonderful community. That's right. They took a place that was really downtrodden and are making it beautiful again, and we love that. Yes, we and do. 
but not as much as you guys are going to love this episode. But welcome here, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We are yeah. super excited to have you. Today we got Daria and Hannah from Erie Center for Arts and Technology, ECAT. ECAT. Got the name right on the third try. <laughs> it's a good time you guys weren't here to see all the other attempts. Um, we're super glad that you guys are here. It seems like you're doing some really awesome stuff in, uh, what's it called, the Equity and Wealth District? The Wayne Health and Wealth Equity District. Awesome. Yep. So what's been going on there? Do you want me to start and then you so can I saw that you guys have trash cans and that didn't really make me like a Facebook post. Yeah. That you guys got a bunch of trash cans sure and I'm like, did. Erie Center Arts and Technology trash cans. Huh. Okay, like this is awesome anyway. But how how does that tie into each other? Okay, you should be really, really excited about the trash cans. I am so pumped I'm about it. You guys are that. super pumped. No. That post was exciting. And I'm sure that's like a very valuable thing for that area. And they're probably super expensive to get put in and no idea yes <laughs> so how about if i tell you how we got here how'd you get here and then i'm gonna let hannah tell you what we're doing cool do it good good yeah plan? okay yeah. so we were started in um 2017 erie center for arts and technology ecat is the mm -hmm. acronym and it is the erie based replication of the manchester bidwell model so mm. if you've never heard of it if your listeners have never heard of it totally check it out um, it is a Pittsburgh-based organization started by a guy named Bill Strickland. Amazing, amazing guy. Mm -hmm. He's in his 80s now. But he created this model as a multi-generational approach to address poverty. And the model does two things. It does youth arts programming, so like after-school programs for mainly high school kids in visual arts. And then it also does adult career training. And those things kind of sound weird together. But when you think about it, it's all about giving people hope and opportunity at various stages in their life. Sure. So Strickland starts this awesome model down in Pittsburgh. It's replicated throughout the country, even in the world. It's replicated over in Israel. And like Erie, you know, two hours north takes us forever to get it. But we <laughs> finally do. And so in 2017, a group of kind of Erie leaders went down to Pittsburgh and were like, we got to have this. Like, this is awesome. Great outcomes. So they brought the model back, created a board, started a nonprofit, hired me as the first executive director in 2019, mm -hmm. and just said, go forth and replicate, oh figure it out, okay? <laughs> so the first thing we gotta figure out is, well, where are we gonna do this cool work? We need a space. So Wayne School um, on East Avenue, very disinvested neighborhood, had been a closed school, closed by the Erie School District in 2017, sitting vacant, had a health center inside it, even while the building had been closed. And we were like, cool. 80, that looks good. 80,000 square feet, totally open. Let's do it. So we bought the building. Um, we've now put $12 million into that building. Oh my gosh, Ooh, wow. wow. Yeah, wow, seriously, what during the, the pandemic. So quickly, we actually closed on the first new market tax credit, which is a really um, creative federal tool for financing. A lot of communities use it. Erie hadn't figured it out. We figured it out. Boom. Boom, awesome, <laughs> 12 million in. And now that building is, I like to say it was dead and it's alive. Um, so ECAT's there doing our thing, arts programs, adult job training, but we didn't need all the space. So that health center that I mentioned, we built them a brand new space. Um, so they're in there with us. United Way of Erie County moved over with us. And then on the third floor of the building, um, UPMC put a school of nursing in there. Mm. There's also a pharmacy on the first floor and some small nonprofits. So we like create all this work, cut the ribbon on this building in 2021, get down to it. And we're like, well, what else could we do? Um, so we started thinking so many people come into the building with so many needs. What else does the community need? And so we decided to dig in a little more on neighborhood development, create this equity district and I'll kick it to Hannah because she's doing the work really okay. intentionally there. Cool. Gosh, what an introduction. Um, so the Equity District was formed in the fall of last year, and we started out by thinking, what is the most important way to tackle this? And it was to make sure that the neighbors were involved. Mm -hmm. we didn't you want try to talk into the mic a little bit more? Sure. Thank you. We can adjust it too, so you're comfy. Thanks. Um, we didn't want to start a development district or start doing work in the neighborhood where we felt like our community wasn't having a voice. You're okay. I'm just messing with stuff. Speaking of not having a voice. <laughs> <laughs> you let me know when you're ready. Oh, you're all right. I'm just trying to figure out which microphone that is. I thought I had them set up here, but apparently not. That's okay. 
Actually, I do have it now. All right, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so we want to make sure that our community really had a voice. So we started by forming a steering committee, and it's made up of our neighbors. So residents who were in the neighborhood, who we met just walking around, who had come into the building, who had made themselves known to us. We were very intentional about including our business leaders who were up and down that East Ave corridor. So we all came together, we sat at the table, and we said, hey, this is our plan. We want to invest more in this neighborhood, more time, more energy, be very intentional about rebuilding this community, not making it what it was in the past, but making it something totally new that addresses all the needs that we have today. Mm -hmm. So we sat down and everyone was really energetic and excited. We got a lot of great feedback. We did a number of surveys in the community, literally going door to door and knocking on doors and doing that work. Uh, we have an amazing outreach coordinator, Javel Showers, who goes out and does a lot of that door to door conversation. We had open houses. We shared the history of the neighborhood. We did a really deep dive into all the things that had been there so we could get ideas for what could be in the future. We did property surveys, over 400 properties in our development district wow. yeah it was a lot of work and it was also in the winter <laughs> so, yeah we we're doing like sidewalk analysis and we we're like well we can't see it today because there's snow on it so we'll have to come back another time mm -hmm. um, but that work was really intentional as well we wanted to make sure that we had a sense of what every single property in our district looked like so that in three years when we do it again we're able to say this is how much was put into this neighborhood these are how many railings were replaced this is how many roof repair projects we did to make sure that our neighbors are really feeling that investment and feeling that energy Awesome. Yeah. So what makes this project different from the ones in Pittsburgh and in other places? Yeah, we kind of joke that uh, ECAD is Bidwell 2.0 because <laughs> um, they, they do great, amazing work, but it's really focused on those programs I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And we just decided that neighborhood development was really a necessary next step. And, you know, in, in Erie, we have some really great neighborhood groups. We mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. our West Bayfront over on the west side. You have BEST, the Bayfront East Side Task Force. You have the Sisters of St. Joseph. Mm -hmm. But there's, like, a lot of pockets with nobody there doing that work. And so this was one of those pockets right along East Avenue. And I tell people all the time, I grew up on the Lower East Side. We used to walk to East Avenue. There was a great restaurant there, P.O.'s. Some of your listeners might remember. It was a cool, bustling commercial corridor, and it's not now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of that has to do, honestly, with the Bayfront Connector. You know, mm -hmm. it, it diverted a lot of traffic away. Right. And so there's just, like, this vision of, well, like, let's try to bring that back. And like Hannah said, do it in a really cool, creative way, kind of tied to, like, the arts, because that's part of our mission. Um, as Hannah, I think, talked to you guys earlier, you know, we ha also hosted the, um, Erie, the business um, Erie Made Academy that, that Bridgeway put on and that showed us like there's a lot of really cool creative entrepreneurs out there mm -hmm. and we thought well maybe this is like a neighborhood they'd like to set up shops let's think about commercial spaces and so it just like all kind of came from that idea of being creative being entrepreneurial and then like then just kind of taking that into neighborhood development so that's definitely how it's different from the <laughs> others I think it's like ever since they they decommissioned the East Avenue Bridge and then tore it down that really um, took a lot of heart out of that area of town. Like, I, I grew up on the upper, upper upper east side of town, but I know my grandparents grew up on the lower east side of town, and when we sit and talk with them, it's like a totally different world than what it used to be. So it's cool to see something, you know, going on down there that, you know, brings the, the life back to it. Yeah, and, and communities evolve, you know, like... I'm from a Russian community on the Lower East Side, a lot of Polish community kind of on East Avenue. Now we got a lot of new Americans. So mm -hmm. the community and the neighborhood need to evolve with it. And it can still be bustling, just like you said, different yeah. in a yeah. different way. There was a large Greek population on East Ave um, many decades ago, and they had a massive cultural center, and they had a bowling alley on East mm -hmm. Ave. And there used to be a movie theater on East Ave. So there were a lot of businesses and a lot of storefronts that were really vibrant and bustling. But yeah, as communities change, those things leave and other needs come up. And we're really trying to listen to the needs of our neighbors now and say, what do you want here? They want dentist's office. They want resources. They want fresh produce. They want opportunities to be homeowners. They want to be able to invest in their own homes and have that autonomy. So we're really trying to make sure that we're tackling the things people are telling us about. That's great. And you're doing that by directly interacting. So what has the community participation been like? Are people receptive? People show up to like if you hold like an open public forum meeting for people to come and talk to you, are they coming? Yeah, we have folks coming and a lot of the things that we try to do are very interactive. So we just had a health fair last Sunday in our community, which was a response to our neighbors wanting to know what was in the building and what resources we could bring in from the city. So we had tons of folks come out and the health department was there. UPMC came with their mobile unit. Um, we had the fire department from our local station eight down the road come. Um, and then we had it in partnership with the 814 concert. So 
people are seeing that there's like a lot of stuff happening on East Ave. Mm-hmm. And then I just came just now fresh from our first farm market that we had on Ooh, East Ave. Nice. Um, and we sold out of all of our produce. That's and amazing. Awesome. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's a pay what you can model. It's based off of the model they do on Braid Street with mm-hmm. Wildfield Urban Farm that Stephanie runs. She's been really instrumental in helping guide me as a resource to make sure that we're doing it in a way that's good for our community. And Kristen Weeks is supplying a lot of our produce and she's making sure that it's very culturally appropriate produce. It's something people can cook with, that they like, they enjoy. Um, and so we're getting a great reception so far. And so we have three more this summer. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, and you know, I really think it's, and Hannah's underselling herself because, I mean, yes, we tried to like advertise, like, come to get for a meeting. And yeah. we, did, we didn't get a lot of response right. in the beginning, but because Hannah and Dravel are out there building trust, like talking to the neighbors and then the neighbors will say, we'd really like this. And then we're doing it. Like mm-hmm. the more you do that, the more trust develops, the more people are apt to say, well, yeah, you're not just talking about it. You're yep. doing it. So yeah, let me tell you the next thing that I need. So I think building that trust and really caring and listening, that's been key. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I see a lot of uh, like apathy a lot of times, especially when it comes to organizations, bigger organizations such as yourself, particularly the government. Obviously, you guys aren't the government, mm-hmm. but, yeah. uh, <laughs> but I see a lot of pe- hesitancy for people um, getting involved and active and participating in these types of programs. So it's really amazing that you guys have put in the footwork and like really grassroots built up that community involvement. Yeah, and it comes, it takes a village. So it comes from all the different people in our building as well. Like we have really great partners in Erie's Black Wall Street and in Birthroot. Like even today at the market, Kyra came out. She's the executive director of Erie's Black Wall Street. And she's like, I just want to be boots on the ground with you. I want to see the neighbors and I want to help out in any way I can. Um, so she's out there, you know, bagging produce and talking to our neighbors and looking through photos with Pat. On her phone and as guy our neighbor comes up she's chatting with him too so it's a lot of that work it's a lot of making sure that you're putting the time and effort in to getting to know who's out there and and doing that work so it definitely takes a village and i would say we were really intentional with creating the district itself like we had to kind of create geographical boundaries like how far do we want to go and really the district that we developed is really small i mean mm-hmm. it's sixth street to 12th street it's only six north south blocks and then from the bayfront parkway to pennsylvania avenue it's really kind of a postage stamp but we did that on purpose to say we can go really deep like we can visit these people and come back and visit them again because we're not talking about you know square miles and city blocks right. it's really a pretty mm-hmm. tight neighborhood and we're like if we're successful we'll build out from that but we wanted to start and be really tight mm-hmm. yeah and that started with literally walking up and down the streets and Dari and I being in the car and driving around being like do we include this side of the street do we include that side of the street like where does this feel like a natural boundary and that bayfront obviously is a very natural boundary and then we're at the top of six and 12th is that commercial corridor so those were very easy delineations for us Sure. Um, and then we always know that we can expand if we're seeing a lot of great results in our district now. We can push forward to the east, to the water. Um, we can do you know whatever seems to be natural yeah. for our growth. Absolutely. And is there any sort of incentive that you guys are offering to like new businesses moving into the area other than just it making it a, a better area to be? Well, I think what we'd really like to do next is to really start in the realm of real estate acquisition. So, you know, there are some commercial storefronts on East Avenue. Some of them, to be honest, are beyond repair. Sure. But some of them could be grabbed and saved. And so I think that's what we're looking at now is what would acquisition of those properties be like? What would it take to renovate them? You know, there's already that happening. So Sean and Kenya Johnson are our real estate owners right on East Avenue. They have a commercial space. So we're already trying to get some tenants in there for them. And then we want to grab some. And I mean, we've talked about a co-working space. We've mm-hmm. talked about like some pop-up space. I have mm-hmm. this vision. If you've ever been to the West Side Market in Cleveland, like there's all these like cool boutique places. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this could be perfect for like some of our creative entrepreneurs. So that's like the next step. So like stay tuned on that. We'll be yeah. back. We'll be back when we start <laughs> buying buildings. Right. Awesome. And uh, with the buildings and attracting people and develop people developing their skills and stuff like that. Have you seen like a lot of people like, can I hear a little bit about your classes and what kind of uh, arts things you're teaching people for these potential future boutique style uh, shops. So you do the arts and I'll do the adult stuff. Okay, sounds good. So our arts programs is middle and high school, mostly high school. So we're seeing a lot of our students get really invested in not only the creative process, but the outcome and getting really excited, especially when we have art shows and they're given the opportunity to sell their work to see what it's like. Yeah, to receive a check for something that they've spent, you know, eight weeks making and learning and it could have, you know, broken in the kiln and I'll try again and they maybe try a different technique or add in some technological elements that they didn't think essentially to do with ceramic pieces. So they're getting really creative and they're they're thinking about 
art as an entrepreneurial space that they could grow into. Um, so Jude Shingle, our arts program coordinator, our yeah, arts we, program we director. We talked with him at the director. Creative Cloud briefly. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah, he's quite a visionary. He's yeah, amazing. He's very cool. Yeah, he very and Jesse cool, Simmons, who is our arts program coordinator, we just brought on. Um, they're doing a lot of great thinking about how can we get our teens have more opportunities to be entrepreneurs. So we just recently, over our spring break, we hosted two programs where students were able to be paid to support art projects. So one was at the Barber Center. We hung their show. They have that amazing like 400 piece of artwork show from artists all over the county. We had students that we paid to hang that art show. Oh, great. Yeah, it was amazing. It was a really great experience for them. They got to learn about the techniques in hanging, the composition. They were able to group things together and use that like big picture thinking for what we want this whole experience to be like for the visitors. And that's something really unique that a lot of high schoolers don't have the opportunity to do, is think in that art space and then be paid for their efforts. Absolutely. Um, and then they also worked at Emergicare. They did some really cool murals on those old electrical spools, like those giant ones that can become mm -hmm. tables. And they had a whole host of kids out there who were learning how to you know, work with an actual company to come up with a design that worked for their theme. Didn't they work on the uh, stuff at Grounded too? Was that you guys? Oh, so that was a bunch of our um, artists, instructors, and our staff. We all came together and we did a bunch of fun projects with that steamroller. Yeah. Yeah, and that steamroller project ended up being partially on the mural of our building. Right. Yeah, that's our latest mural. We're really happy with it. Yeah, I saw those guys working on that, uh, I don't know, a while ago, and uh, it looked really cool. And I think that's amazing that you're giving these kids the opportunity and the experience and the hope. Like you said, that's a big part of it. And I could imagine, like, as a young child, younger child, middle school, high school age, like, I was always brought up that, like, arts are not something. Yeah, not a career path. It's no. viable. And of course, we still hear that. But there are lots of ways that you can work in the arts and be very successful. And I think seeing our teaching artists from so many diverse backgrounds and having so much experience, they're able to see that in action. Like, yes, you can earn a living and you can earn money from from the arts. So like Erie Arts and Culture is doing a great job of having apprentices work on their mural projects to show that you can learn on the job and you can get paid for that and then you can go into that field. I think it's so um, important to like even if you don't go into the arts as a profession just to like learn how to like critically think, think outside the box. A lot of like the STEM stuff is very technical. Mm -hmm. So you know something that I've seen from talking to guests and work that I've done you know around here is like the art process, the creative process, allows you to better envision a future that might be different from the present you currently have. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And we see that all the time, especially from the students who come through our doors who maybe didn't have the opportunity to study the arts in their schools or where they're from. So to be able to experience all of that in a very safe space where they're allowed to fail and they're allowed to be creative and they're pushed and challenged, um, there's all that personal growth that happens at the same time. Right. And a really important part of our model, actually, is all of our instructors are teaching artists. They're not necessarily art teachers, and that's mm -hmm. really different, you know, because teaching artists have their own body of work. They're probably trying to make some money, whether that's their main profession or not, but they, we think it's important for kids to see that, and that's who's instructing them, not maybe just someone who went to school for art, which is great. We have a place for that, but in our program, it really needs to be a teaching artist. Right. So that's, that's an important part of the model. Absolutely. That experience and that uh, ability to be able to share that process is you know, critical for anybody, I think, to have like a mentor or to have somebody you can look up to and be like, hey, this person is out there doing it. Why not me? Why can't I? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Right. And then the other half of our work is just more like traditional career training. So all of our programs, well, most of our programs right now are in healthcare. And the reason for that is our model needs to be responsive to our local economy, right? So who are our big employers? You know, we have big UPMC. healthcare employers, UPMC, mm -hmm. um, Allegheny Health Network. So Lecom, our first, yeah. Lecom, mm -hmm. um, so our first program actually we're licensed by the Board of Education. We're a privately licensed school. And so we're licensed to do a medical assistant program. So we have a 28 week program. And when you're done, you can set for certification as a medical assistant and our program is no cost. And it's really important to note, neither the youth programs or the adult programs, there's no cost. So in this medical assistant, there's no tuition. It's fully covered. Mm -hmm. We give you books. We give you scrubs. We give you everything you need. We even pay for your first crack at the exam after 28 weeks. And then our students can graduate and go out and get a job. Medical assistants start at about $17 an hour right now. Mm -hmm. So it's a great you know, start in your, in your career path. And we're working on a couple of additional kind of um, entry points into the healthcare mm -hmm. field. So that's that's an important part too for folks who maybe missed an opportunity in high school or even later or graduated, not mm -hmm. sure what to do. It's a nice on-ramp for them. We actually just, um 
enrolled our first our first class for this fall um, with that MA program, and a ton of the interviewees that we accepted into the program are from the neighborhood, and so they walk to their interview and they say, "Oh yeah, I just live down the street. Like this will be so great for me. It's such a great opportunity. I can just walk here to school every day, you know, Monday through Friday, and they're able to be so close and so local. So we're really seeing a lot of that impact that we're doing directly impact our neighborhood. Definitely, transportation is such a huge barrier for so many people on so many different levels. Yeah, um, absolutely. Sometimes it's hard to just like make it to get food or grocery shop and to have a school that's like right there really eliminates that you know what i mean or changes the barrier changes the whole dynamic mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and we're serving i mean in our youth program students from throughout the county mm -hmm. i mean i i don't know i think most of us have a real heart for the city we want to make sure we're serving our city kids but we are getting kids and they find their way there we've had students from union city we've had students from gerard mm -hmm. you know so kids hear about it and they'll they'll get there one way or another right. so free school yeah yes yeah. so i think that that is huge too i mean obviously it's huge i mean you try to better yourself and if you got to take out like a ton of loans just to like get an education you know you feel like you're putting yourself behind the eight ball before you even uh yeah absolutely before yeah. you even get started yeah already deterred from from doing that just went at, from the sheer scale of it absolutely. and even at like the age of 18 when you're supposed to like go to college or whatever like your brain really is not soup at least my brain i can't speak yeah, for anybody neither, else's but my brain was not really <laughs> working the way it, it is today, you know what I mean? Or the way it is like four or five years from then to actually be able to make a, uh, a good decision about my life and what I want to do and uh, going to school and spending this massive amount of money before. Absolutely. Um, before yep. I was ready. Before you even get started, yeah, yeah. you mentioned you were a non-traditional student, and a exactly. lot of our students are the same way, and we've actually seen some students that have applied for this program that were in CNA programs, and it was the pandemic, so they didn't get that hands-on experience, so they don't feel like they're qualified to go into that profession, and this is an amazing opportunity to, again, not have any tuition costs, still get a really amazing education, and we have a 100% success rate. All the students who've gone through our program have passed their national certification That's exam, amazing. That's and awesome. are in the field right now doing that work here in our community. Absolutely incredible. Thank you guys so much. So what other classes are you planning on offering? You say you can get, are you going to focus on the medical field? Or we are there... um, right now, but we also are bringing on um, a program, another program from Pittsburgh. It's called Freedom House, and it's a community health worker training, mm -hmm. and it's really short. It's five weeks. And so unlike our 28 week where, you know, you got to make a commitment, not a financial commitment, but personal time. Um, sure. This is five week program, and it just gives you a really high level introduction to a lot of healthcare careers. And when you're done, you could be qualified to go out and be a community health worker, which is important particularly in these outreach efforts. Um, so that's something we're bringing in from, from Pittsburgh as well. We have some funding to do that, and we're excited. And the other one, we actually offer a construction training program at Erie High. So we don't have the space for like a construction lab, but mm -hmm. they do at Erie High School. And so we rent space from the district, and we offer that program in the evenings for adults. Um, and we'll be hopefully starting that class up again this fall. We're struggling with funding a little bit, but we're hoping that's going to come through. And that is another great introduction to all the construction trades it's a 28 week program maybe 25 i think um, and so you come out of that and you have some certifications in various fields and maybe some of those students will go right to work some of them might go into the union apprenticeship programs but that's another one because there's a huge need and i'm not sure if everybody's aware of that huge need for trained construction workers in our community there's never enough and so we're also trying to address that need with that program definitely and uh dang i had a question how many people, this is such a huge operation, how many people are you on your guys' team? You know, it's funny because you were like, you're such a big organization. And I, I, I imagine, it, I'm going to take, can I guess first? You can sure. guess first, that's a fun I'm going to say there are 13 people. I think there's eight of us, am I right? Seven? Uh, yeah, and we just hired two staff this month. So, so, that, we were, so that eight includes those two new. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Well, I, w I wasn't too far you off. Too I guess far. Little, you weren't too far. I, 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 I kind of imagined it just from my experience and what I know of different programs similar to yours that it's usually a skeleton crew of yes. superstars. No, we do have teaching artists that come on for the semester. They're right. just like part time employees for mm -hmm. us. So we don't count that at no, all. No, so those, that's those. above and beyond right. um, yes. our core staff. Core staff, mm -hmm. eight people out here doing amazing, incredible things. Thank you. Well, we love the work. I yeah. mean, and it's funny, you know, I was hired as the executive director and then, you know, it's like, oh, build the programs, find the building, build a staff. And we are, I just got incredibly lucky with a staff that's really passionate and really qualified and just really great, you know, and we're a great team and everybody gels really well. Mm -hmm. You can get a lot done when everybody important. just really works well together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having a positive culture makes such a big difference in any job or any sort of thing. And plus, like, who... 
it sounds like an incredibly rewarding job on a lot of different levels. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get to see a huge impact that you guys are happening over like a large swath of, you know, East yeah. downtown. Yeah. Absolutely. And you see so many things happening and it's hard to tell where that spark initiated, but like the trash cans that you mentioned, yeah. that's a really, really big deal to get trash cans. <laughs> and it seems like a small thing, but it's really not. It took a lot of effort and a lot of partnership from a lot of different organizations to get that done. And then, you know, the A1 four concerts are there and they're mm -hmm. fixing sidewalks and they're repainting street signs. And like, there are so many amazing things that are happening. And it's because so many people are showing investment and they're showing that they care and they're showing that there is a place for activity and for vibrancy on East Ave. Yeah. So it's making a huge difference. And I've, I've recently been gotten like a little bit more of a up close look at like the red tape that goes on to mm -hmm. something like getting trash cans yeah. put on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it is, it, it's just, there's just so much that people don't see that's going on behind the scenes to be able to do that. Well, because, with, you know, we can put the trash cans in, but who's going to empty them out? I mean, right? that's, that's the problem, you yeah, know? So when we started talking to the neighbors, I mean, you know, a neighborhood development doesn't have to be like sexy, creative. I mean, it might just be, there's a lot of trash on the street. How do we get it off the street? <laughs> yeah, right. And that's what the neighbors were saying. And so we're like, okay, yeah, trash cans. But then, you know, you talk to the city and the city's like, well, you know, that's not, that's not on our cans. route. Yeah. yeah, we're not going to pick those up. That's mm -hmm. that's not, you know, and so they're, you're right. And I mean, it is red tape. And I, I think the city's been really willing to work with us, but they want to see partnership. I mean, mm -hmm. they want to see that people are really asking for this, really going to try to be accountable. Um, so that was a great partnership. And so finally we were like, if we put them in, will you pick them up? And, and they agreed to do and it. They did. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. It's yeah. so good. Um, so what's next on the agenda? Uh, to what talk do we have about, to look for? Or what we're, no, what's like coming? The projects, yeah. Like what's in the works right now? Give us the, the, yeah. the scoop that nobody knows about. Well, I feel um, like you've gotten a couple scoops that nobody knows about. <laughs> right. Right. That's I what know. we love. We love it. Exactly. I'm sorry. No, I mean, real estate, it's it's all about real yeah, estate. Yeah, the real estate. And there's, there's some really cool buildings over there. And mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, if you drive around, it's easy to just like drive past places and be like, eh. but if you really like look, yeah. you know, there's just a lot of really cool commercial or community spaces. So like, that's a big one. And then honestly, we really, the next step for us is, is housing mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think most people in the area are aware we do not have a sufficient stock of affordable housing of, let me say, quality affordable housing for right. folks. And so we've got a lot of renters in this neighborhood. That's fine, you know, but if you have landlords from out of town, they don't take care of the properties. I mean, it can mm -hmm. cause, and we've seen this in all our neighborhoods. So we want to certainly work with homeowners to like make their homes healthier for them. Right. We want to think about acquiring some of these rental properties and maybe figuring out ways to rent them ourselves. We want to work with partners like Erie's Black Wall Street who are teaching people how to own homes, how to buy homes. So that's like on the on the real estate side. Is there any sort of limitation that you guys have as far as how you spend your funds on things like that? No, and I mean, some of it will depend on where the funds come from, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so for example, the city has quite a bit of funding for home repair. If we kind of partner with them on that, they will have some restrictions Through on how that goes. Through the Community Development Block Grant? through that and through the um, ARP, through the rescue funds that okay. they received. It's called the Whole Home Program. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it depends on the funding source, but I'll be honest too, we have some donors who just want to like come to the table and fix houses. And so Hell yeah. then it's like, do whatever yeah. we want to do, right. you know? So, so yeah, so the real estate stuff and then Hannah can talk about like some of the kind of programming. That's the cooler stuff, I think. Than that. Gosh. Yeah. The market. Yes, our market. Yeah, we were hoping to have a dental clinic. That's something that I mentioned in passing that there used to be a dentist office on East Ave a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And we're hearing that a lot. You know, you've heard it at the market today. Someone was like, oh, do you have a dentist office in the building? And I had to say, no, we have a doctor's office and a pharmacy, but we don't have a dentist office. Um, so those are things we're trying to think about how we could partner with some mm -hmm. really cool organizations to make that, again, no cost to our neighbors. Um, it's not fair to have them you know, pay out of pocket for things that are resources that just haven't been invested in the community before. So sure. We want to make sure that those opportunities are available. Um, we also, we have a really amazing arts program and we have really amazing minds. So we're hoping that in the future we can beautify East Ave in some really creative ways. So do more place making, not just murals like we already have, quite a few murals in our district, which is lovely. One of them was actually done with ECAT students. It's a gun violence mural that is on the corner of the Hands Building on East mm -hmm. Ave and, um, and 6th Street. And we're hoping that there are lots of really interesting ways we can involve our youth in that. We've had some really great successful projects in the past where we gave them a design prompt. We said, create a sculpture outside made out of ceramics that reflects our community. 
okay, how are you going to ask the community what they want? What is important? What colors should it be? What shape should it take? How can it withstand the elements? And also, this is your budget. So work within that framework and like make something really amazing. And they did. They exceeded in every single one of those projects. So we'd love to include our youth again to find ways to have them go out into the community, ask questions, get all of those transferable skills. Like, how do you communicate clearly with somebody? How do you get out of your comfort zone a little bit and like walk up to a stranger you don't know and ask a question? What kind of questions do you ask? Um, and make sure that it's really reflecting the history and the culture and the vibrancy of our neighborhood, but done with the way that ECAT likes to do things, which sure. is very community-based. Yeah, and I, I would say it's really three buckets of work. It's the it's the homes, like I talked about. It's commercial buildings, and then it's this placemaking. It's how do we really make, you know, we, we create place and a sense of place. And, and that's, a, that's a real community with history. Hannah did an amazing job researching the history of the neighborhood. That's why she knows all the things that were on all the blogs. But, you know, I mean, there's, there's a sense of place there and we want to kind of really make that um, feel alive again. So that's really like the three buckets of work that we're going to be focusing on. Cool. And you guys said you started in 2017. The board was formed in 2017. I was hired in 2019. Okay. And we, we opened the building in 2021. That's a lot of uh, ground you've covered in a short amount it of time. It is, yeah. Even the development district alone was started in the fall. So we hit the ground running, and Dari and I are both very like pragmatic people, and we're like, let's come with a schedule and a timeline and see results and stay on track. And we've had some really good consultants and partners who have helped keep us on track. Um, but it's a lot of forward momentum, and once you hear things, you're inspired. And if you have the staff and the resources to do them, then there's no excuse you know, That's not true. to respond to those needs. Have you guys seen? Do you guys have any like measurable results as far as the students um, that are involved in your programs? Are they getting so, good grades? So are the they... youth programs? It's, it's really interesting that you ask that. You know, when when we started this work, it was like you really have to think about why. You know, why are we doing this? And in Pittsburgh, um, there was you know talk like that's what we measure. We're going to measure you know the students in our yeah. programs are more likely to graduate from high school. But Jude Shingle, who Hannah mentioned, who's our arts program director, he and I talked and we're like. We don't really love that measurement. First of all, it's a little dishonest. Like, can I really say that we impacted their high school sure. graduation rate because they came to one class at ECAT? That seems so. Really, what we're working on and, and we're creating, and I appreciate the question about impact, some like pre and post surveys, we're really just trying to, to create a sense of belonging and safety in the mm -hmm. kids. And so it's really not about grades. I mean, we certainly hope they do well in school and we yeah, want them to graduate. But this is really, and you know, particularly in, in our time now, youth are going through a lot we're all going through a lot but particularly kids and so to provide a space that's just safe and creative and just they can kind of be who they are um, we need to measure a little bit about that like how they felt when they came in and how they left but that's where we're going and, and that's kind of our why for why we do the work um, and I think that's going to continue to drive us as we move forward right and I think that one really comes with the other you know what mm -hmm. I mean you can't wash your hands with one-handed, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah, and then our adult programs are a lot easier to measure. You know, graduation rates, their certification rates, and placement, job and jobs. placement, placement yes. and jobs, mm -hmm. and then the growth in their hourly rate or their salary from when they started to when they get that certification. So those things are a little easier. Mm -hmm. um, but even within that, there's a lot of personal growth that happens with our adult students. You know, their non-traditional students are coming in with a lot of barriers. They need a lot of support to make sure that everything is falling in place so they can get to class on time. Um, a lot of our students have. Um, dependents at home, whether it's parents or family members or children that are reliant on them. So for them to make that commitment to come to school every day and to show up and go to clinicals and their externships and like go across the city to do that work is a lot. So we try and make sure we really build in a lot of that support as well to make sure that, yeah, they do graduate, but they also are feeling fulfilled and they feel like it wasn't a sacrifice to come to school. It was something they were able to do because they had all that network right. support. I'm sure that, uh, you know, their peers that do the uh classes with them also builds a nice network and oh, positive yeah. network. Yeah, for they have group chats and they chat all the time and they are a big support system for each other. And they encourage each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, like Anna said a lot, honestly, at the end of, of our last cohort, it was all women. Mm -hmm. um, and, and most of them had experienced some type of, you know, pretty serious trauma or difficulty in their lives. And they really supported one another. And it was really cool. We had a graduation mm -hmm. ceremony in May and, you know, they all wore caps and gowns. Mm -hmm. Pur purple is our color. Han yeah. Hannah and I are purple people. It's 
it's it's all purple <laughs> all the time at ECAT, purple caps and gowns, and you know, just to see them, and they were so happy mm -hmm. to just have that day and be with each other, and we invited their families, and I think four of the five went to work the following Monday. Wow. They had jobs That's that started great. that Monday. Awesome. Well, yeah. That was amazing. And one had had to move to Cranberry to start her job on Monday, and she oh. got there. And another thing that I love about our program and our staff is that we don't just graduate the students and then say, you're on your own. We really follow up with them and make sure that we're addressing needs as they arise. So one of the students, she ended up needing some supplies before she could go into work, and we were able to provide that for her. We sent her an Amazon gift card. We said, we hope you have everything you need for your first day. Like You can still count on us. Let us know if there's anything we can do to support you, because you were always an ECAT student. You're always an ECAT grad, and we are here to make sure that you're successful in life. We're not just going to close the door on you when you leave the building. Are you guys developing partnerships with the local employers? So UPMC has been very supportive from the beginning. And so really right now they're a huge supporter and actually financial supporter as well. ECAT benefits greatly. A lot of people, you haven't asked, and I'm surprised. Most people are like, where does your money come from? I, mean, I did ask like, that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so we get a lot of money from tax credit programs. So mm -hmm. the state has the neighborhood partnership program. And so we get... Um, employer contributions through that. And we hope that as we continue to do a better job, more, more employers will come to the table and be like, oh my God, you're turning out great employees for me. Yes, yes. I'm happy to yeah, give you this tax exactly. credit donation. So that's a really big part of our funding. And then we get grants and kind of private donations like most nonprofits. So, mm -hmm. so employer partnerships are important both so that we can place our students and also because we hope the employers will turn around and support yeah. us. I mean, you're taking a big uh, chunk of their time and their money and their effort and their resources away to train people that you guys are providing that training for, you know what I mean? And I'll be honest with you, most employers are very interested in a diverse workforce now. It's very important mm -hmm. to them um, for one reason or another, and I think we can help in that area. As Hannah mentioned, we've got a lot of students who just, it's, it's, it's convenient at ECAT, but it's also familiar. Many of them went to school there when it was a school, it's in their neighborhood, and so it's a place they can trust. And so if we can help train those students and get them placed with employers, it helps the employer diversify their workforce, and that's really important as well. We also definitely go the extra mile with our students. We have a couple of students coming into our future cohort that are English as second language learners, and so we're paying mm -hmm. for tutoring to make sure that they are able to be successful when they enter the classroom. So it's not just, oh, you're in our program, like, good luck out there, I hope yeah. you come prepared. It's how can we set you up for success so that when you are here, you are able to fully engage and learn and be present so that then when you're out in the workforce, we are graduating people who are really confident, can mm -hmm. be really successful in their jobs, and be a really big asset to their community. And who teaches the medical classes? We had a medical instructor. We had actually had two medical instructors last year. Both of them moved on to something else. We just hired our, our new medical instructor. Her name's Danielle. She's a woman of color. She's actually from St. Thomas, which mm -hmm. I just learned this week, which is mm -hmm. super cool. Um, she was a medical instructor at another uh, institution for a number of years, and so she just started with okay. us, and we're really excited she to have her. She hit the ground running. Yes. Oh my gosh, she is so excited. She's like building curriculum. She's like planning things on whiteboards. She's going through all of her inventory. Did you see her sweatshirt today? I did. It was so cute. A, a former student of hers made her a medical assistant instructor sweatshirt with Aww. like the heartbeat with the scrubs and and like all these icons on it and it was gifted to her when she left the program so oh, yeah she's incredible. really great we're really looking forward to how she addresses this future class and where she takes the program right I, w I was just curious because I know that for a lot of the arts classes you have like a working artist instructor yes. and I figured that probably was not no what you could this do for a medical yeah, class. These, yeah this instructor it's full-time paid and you know they're with us all year long and they're preparing just like a you know like a teacher so right. yeah that's it's a little different and how many courses go, do you go through a year in the adult program, yeah. it's the medical assistant program. It's 28 weeks. So we have one cohort that goes there all the way through. We just seeded, what did we enroll, 19 for the so fall? 19. Uh, yep, it's like a full school year. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we start in September and we'll finish in May. Cool. And then we take the summer off to kind of regroup. Now that's this year. I mean, as we grow, we have space. We have some extra classrooms. So again, as funding kind of changes, we probably could start to roll two at a time. We want to get mm -hmm. really good at what we do before sure. we mm -hmm. try that. But it could, could we happen. We also definitely want to add some evening classes and some of those shorter programs like Daria mentioned, like Freedom House, that are a bit more accessible for folks who have full-time jobs or can't mm -hmm. adjust to a second or third shift to be a part of a program like that. Cool. Well, it sounds like you guys are doing amazing stuff. I know yeah. that you have places to be tonight. So uh, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks for having us. This was great. And we'll we'll come back and update you. Yeah, yeah please do. do yeah. Please do. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be a fun like phase two of our, our program and our plan for you. Yeah. yeah. We'll be, I, well, I want to go down. I feel like I haven't been down there at all. So I want to go like. Come down. Explore. Have you been to New York lunch yet? Gus's restaurant? Not, oh, Steve yeah. New York lunch. Yeah, Not in a long time. You've yeah. got to go. Yeah. Get a yeah. milkshake for lunch. It's like the best. <laughs> I'm going to have to come stop by. Yeah. And then uh, we actually have a couple new businesses that are opening on East Ave. I saw there's like a 
speakeasy or like a it's a jazz, jazz club, club. Yeah. Jazz yes. club. nice yeah um denise grady and her daughter rasha grady are setting everything up and we did some uh, elbow grease work for them to like step it looks in really and, nice inside oh my gosh yeah, yeah dario's saying there's some really beautiful buildings like the stained glass yeah, in there and their bars it's beautiful wood it's gorgeous in there like the outside you're just thinking oh it's you know like some vinyl siding and it's some green peeling paint and you go and you're like oh my gosh this is a gem amazing yeah the woodwork and the floors yeah so come that's, visit. It's needed. I, I expect you to be members by the time that they open. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. That's a challenge well, I think we can I, uh, yeah. rise to. Okay. <laughs> we, we do have to be involved too, like as much as we can. We, this we try to do our best, yeah. Support all the artists and all the people that come on here and that's all the great. things. So I'm sure that we will eventually, we will make our way down there for great. sure. Great. great. Well, thanks for your work in the community as well. Just uh, like having great conversations. Yeah, it's such a part of it. People. Thank it's you. wonderful. Yeah. Thank we you. We greatly appreciate it. Um, Thank you guys. Thanks again for coming out. Thank you everybody who listened. You guys are all the best. Thanks for to all of our sponsors, all the people on Patreon who support us, and everybody that likes, follows, shares, and comments on all of our stuff. We love you guys. You're the best. Peace out. Goodbye. <laughs>